is it time to de-risk on this? Well, I, I think that might be overstating it. Uh, you know, we have certainly um, coming from a very low level of volatility. It's summer. Uh, this is a shock, but it's an ongoing issue. And investors need to be aware of balance in their portfolio. We talked about the haven trades. Um, if you go into a low market, low volatility market environment with a well-structured portfolio, then there isn't the need to sort of make dramatic changes. And, and that's really sort of the context of fixed income um, when you have events like North Korea that, you know, it, 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 it is a lot of challenges to fixed income in terms of rising rates. Uh, but what you see going on here is why you have this part of your portfolio in some lower expected return investments because it can offset for when you have these kinds of shocks. So, Jeff, when we hear things like uh, Jeff Gunlock saying that he's going to be selling some high yield, selling emerging market debt because they just run too much, and then you get something like this, do you need to pare back sort of those high yield reaches that you've been investing in? So we've talked for a while now about the valuation challenge in the riskier segments of fixed income. You mentioned a couple of them, high yield, emerging markets, uh, bank loans. The valuation arguments have been not the main reason for owning them. We're at or close to historic tight levels of spread across the credit spectrum. So when you have a shock, you highlighted volatility in North Korea, there's really no margin for error, and so you have the potential for widening spreads. The markets are, are, are widening a tiny bit, um, but it is an argument for a higher quality portfolio, mainly because the environment has been so benign and there was no room for this kind of shock in, in valuation. So we've been talking about up in quality for a while. Uh, Mark Lachini, I want to bring you in here and ask you about sentiment. As we talk about the shock, the concern about North Korea right now, right after President Trump was elected, there was a big rush on sentiment. Consumer sentiment, business sentiment, everybody was up. It's really positive. Is there a point at which these sorts of uh, uh, con continuing disputes over things like nuclear weapons really starts to affect sentiment that can affect active market, affect stock prices, for example? Well, absolutely, David. I mean, you're right. I mean, we had a spike in sentiment, uh, positive sentiment, by way of not only small businesses, but as well uh, larger company CEOs and CFOs, and obviously in the consumer front as well. And uh, that's remained elevated. I mean, just this week, uh, we got a report from the National Federation of Independent Businesses that showed optimism uh, ticking back upward close to its 16-year high. So uh, I think the news generally has been one of uh, good economic conditions that uh, fall fostering an environment in which companies, CEOs, large and small, and consumers are feeling reasonably good about how things look, both not just in the current condition, but as well uh, expectations-wise. But that said, that's so-called soft data. And we know the market tends to respond more directly to the soft data than necessarily the hard data. So to the extent that this sentiment gets eroded and ultimately bleeds into actual spending by way of businesses or consumers that starts to infect the hard data, that that could weigh on economic conditions and then, of course, facilitate a self-feeding cycle, which would not be good for the market or economic conditions overall. But, you know, I think we're a long way from that. I think, uh, as Jeffrey said, it's premature to overreact to the news about North Korea that came out yesterday. But that said, it is something that we spiked as a, a potential black swan for 2017 or 18 that investors have to be wary of. The market is ripe for a correction. It's not so much that one is going to occur because it's it's inevitable that it will. It's not being prepared for it by way of asset allocation and so on. And right. obviously, once again, speaking to Jeff's issue with regard to fixed income being a component of a portfolio to dampen volatility.